Hello and welcome to our bite-sized session on mastering risk assessment and enhancing person-centered care in healthcare science. Today we'll explore essential concepts and practices that ensure safety, efficiency and patient-focused care in healthcare settings. Risk assessment is a fundamental process in healthcare science that helps identify, evaluate and mitigate potential risks to ensure the safety and well-being of patients, staff and the public. This content buster provides an introductory overview of risk assessment in healthcare science, emphasising its importance and outlining the Health and Safety Executive's HSE five-step approach. Healthcare science encompasses various disciplines, including diagnostic services, therapeutic services and support services, all of which involve inherent risks. Risk assessment plays a crucial role in identifying hazards, assessing risks and impl implementing control measures to prevent accidents, injuries and adverse effects. In healthcare settings, effective risk assessments is essential for maintaining patient safety, ensuring regulatory compliance and promoting a culture of continuous improvement. The Health and Safety Executive's five steps to risk assessment provides a structured approach to this process, guiding us through each stage. So let's break down these steps. The first step in the risk assessment process is to identify hazards present in the healthcare environment. Hazards may include biological agents, chemicals, physical hazards, ergonomic factors and psychosocial risks. Healthcare professionals should systematically inspect the workplace equipment, procedures and activities to identify potential sources of harm. Examples of hazards in healthcare settings may include infectious agents, hazardous chemicals, equipment malfunctions, manual handling tasks and workplace stressors. Once hazards are identified, the next step is to determine who might be harmed by these hazards and how they could be affected. This includes patients, healthcare workers, visitors and other individuals present in the healthcare environment. Consideration should be given to vulnerable groups such as patients with compromised immune systems, healthcare workers with specific occupational risks and visitors with mobility impairments. Potential harm may include injuries, illness, infections, allergic reactions, psychological distress and environmental damage. Risk, evalu uh, risk evaluation involves assessing the likelihood and severity of harm associated by identified hazards. This step helps prioritise risks based on their potential impact and the likelihood of occurrence. Healthcare professionals should consider existing control measures and their effectiveness in mitigating risks. Precautions may include engineering controls, administrative controls, personal protective equipment or PPE and training interventions. The goal is to implement proportionate and effective control measures to reduce risks to an acceptable level while considering the nature of the hazard and the context of its exposure. In the next step, it is essential to document the findings of the risk assessment process, including identified hazards, potential harms, risk evaluation outcomes and selected control measures. Risk of assessment documentation should be comprehensive, clear and accessible to relevant stakeholders, including healthcare workers, management and regulatory authorities. Implementation of control measures should be systematically carried out, ensuring that appropriate precautions are put in place to mitigate identified risks. This may involve updating policies, procedures, equipment safeguards and training programmes as necessary. And in the final step, the risk of the risk assessment process should be regularly reviewed and updated to ensure its continued effectiveness in managing risks in the healthcare environment. Healthcare organisations should establish mechanisms for ongoing monitoring and review of implemented control measures, incident reporting and feedback mechanisms. Periodic reviews allow for the identification of emerging hazards, changes in the healthcare environment and advancements in best practices, prompting necessary adjustments to the risk assessment and control measures. Updating risk assessment documentation and communicating changes to relevant stakeholders facilitate continuous improvement and compliance with regulatory requirements in healthcare science. 
So legislation plays a crucial role in providing a legal framework for risk assessment in healthcare science. The Health and Safety at Work Act and the Control of Substances Hazards to Health or COSH regulations are key pieces of legislation that mandate risk assessment practice to ensure the safety and well-being of patients and workers in the healthcare settings. The Health and Safety at Work Act is the primary piece of legislation governing health and safety in the workplace in the United Kingdom. The purpose is defines the employer's responsibilities to protect the health, safety and welfare at work of employees and members of the public and defines employees' duties to protect themselves and each other. A healthcare science assistant must use appropriate PPE to risk assessments and must be completed on clinical measurement techniques and workspace to ensure patient and worker safety. If a patient takes measurements at home, risk assessments should be taken of the home environment. Risk assessments should be completed on patient requirements and needs. Control of subsidies hazards to health are cost regulations 1994 and subsequent amendments 2004. The purpose of this regulation is the requirements for employers to control substances hazards to health by reducing or preventing employees exposure to these substances. Risk assessments of all hazardous substances must be completed. Substances must be handled and disposed of according to guidelines and adhere to cost regulations when taking clinical measurements from patients. So legislation such as the Health and Safety at Work and the Control of Substances Hazards to Health provides a robust legal framework for risk assessments in healthcare science. These laws mandate the assessment of workplace hazards and hazardous substances to protect both patients and workers. Compliance with legislative requirements is essential for man maintaining a safety and healthy working environment in healthcare settings and for promoting the well-being of all individuals involved. So the health and safety legislation forms the backbone of risk assessment practices in healthcare settings. Laws such as the Health and Safety Work Act and the Control of Substances has into Health provide the legal framework for identifying, evaluating and managing risks in the workplace. These legislative instruments serve a dual purpose. Firstly, they outline the responsibilities of both employers and employees concerning health and safety, emphasising the need for regular risk assessments. Secondly, they offer guidance on specific hazards and risk pertinent to healthcare settings, such as those posed by hazardous substances and clinical measurements techniques. Understanding how legislation intersects with risk assessment is crucial for ensuring compliance and fostering a safe work environment in the healthcare science. By aligning risk assessment practices with relevant legislation, healthcare professionals can effectively identify and mitigate potential risks, thus safeguarding the well-being of patients and workers alike. In clinical settings, it is imperative to conduct thorough risk assessments for both clinical measurement techniques and the workspace. This ensures the safety of patient and healthcare professional. So let's explore how risk assessment applies to these areas. So risk assessments and clinical measurement techniques and workspace. So identify potential risks associated with specific measurement procedures such as blood pressure monitoring, electrocardiography or blood glucose testing. Evaluate the risks related to equipment, malfunctions, patient discomfort or inaccurate results. Implement control measures to mitigate risks such as ensuring proper calibration of instruments, providing adequate training to staff and establishing protocols for patient positioning and monitoring. In regards to workspace, assess the physical environment where clinical measurements are performed, including examination rooms, laboratories and patient care areas. Identify hazards such as trip hazards, ergonomic issues, chemical exposures and infection control risks. Implement measures to enhance workspace safety, such as maintaining cleanliness, ensuring proper ventilation, organising equipment for easy access and implementing protocols for handling hazardous materials. 
So when patients conduct measurements at home, assessing their environment is crucial. Factors such as accessibility, hygiene and safety must be considered. Let's delve into the specifics of assessing the home environment for patients. So in regards to the home environment assessment, evaluate the patient's home environment for factors that may affect measurements accuracy and safety, such as lighting conditions, cleanliness and accessibility. Identify potential hazards such as slippery floors, obstacles and inadequate ventilation. Implement measures to address identified risks such as recommending adjustments to home layout, providing guidance on proper equipment usage and storage and advising on infection control practices. For our patients conducting measurements at home, assess the patient's ability to perform measurements accurately and safely in their home environment. Consider factors such as the patient's physical capabilities, cognitive function and adherence to instructions. Provide guidance and support to ensure proper measurement techniques and adherence to prescribed protocols. Each patient is unique and their characteristics and needs must be carefully evaluated during risk assessment. This includes identifying communication needs and understanding physical or mental disabilities that may impact measurement taking. Let's explore how to undertake risk assessment based on patient characteristics and needs. So patient characteristics. Recognise diverse patient characteristics that may impact measurement procedures such as age, gender, cultural background and medical history. Identify specific needs related to communication, mobility, sensory impairment and cognitive function. Consider factors such as language barriers, physical disabilities and mental health conditions that may affect the patient's ability to participate in measurements and follow instructions. When undertaking taking risk assessments, notice patient needs such as communication requirements or assistance in understanding instructions. Recognise patient characteristics like physical or mental disabilities and how they may affect measurement procedures. Understand and synthesise patient characteristics to inform risk assessment, ensuring individualised care and safety. Express patient needs and support them with relevant and persuasive arguments, advocating for tailored approaches to risk management and measurement procedures. So let's explore integrating risk assessment measures. So first, identify potential risks. Identifying potential risks associated with specimen collection such as contamination, needle stick injuries and patient discomfort. Proactive risk identification through thorough assessment of the specimen collection process, equipment and environmental factors. Follow protocols for reporting and addressing identified risks promptly to minimise adverse outcomes. Following SOPs or standard operating procedures. Implement SOPs for specimen collection that outline standardised procedures for mitigating risks. Ensure SOPs address key aspects of specimen collection, including patient preparation, sample handling, infection control measurements and documentation requirements. Attend regular training and updates on SOPs to healthcare staff to ensure adherence and compliance with best practice. In regards to specimen collection procedures, risk assessment measures are essential to ensure safety and accuracy. This involves prioritising person-centred care, tailor specimen collection procedure to meet the individual needs and preferences of patients, ensuring a compassionate and respectful approach. Effective communication, foster open communication between healthcare professionals and patients throughout the specimen collection process and addressing any concerns or requests promptly. And maintain strict adherence to quality control measures and protocols to minimise errors and ensure the integrity of collected specimens. So now it's time for a quiz. First question, what is the first step in the risk assessment process? evaluating risks, identifying hazards, deciding on precautions, or reviewing assessments. And the correct answer, identifying hazards. Next question, what should healthcare professionals systematically inspect during risk assessment? Workplace only, 
procedures only, activities only, or workplace equipment procedures and activities. And the correct answer is workplace equipment procedures and activities. Question three, who might be harmed by hazards in healthcare settings? Only patients, only healthcare workers, patients, healthcare workers, visitors and others are only visitors. Correct answer is patients, healthcare workers, visitors and others. And question four, what is the goal of risk evaluation in healthcare? To prioritise risks based on the severity, to eliminate all identified hazards, to reduce risks to an acceptable level or to ignore identified hazards. To reduce risks to an acceptable level. How many did you get right? Please review your answers and if need be, go back and review some of the content so that you can answer any questions that you got wrong correctly. Next, we have a case study, and this is a risk assessment in a pathology laboratory. So you are part of a healthcare team working in a pathology laboratory, responsible for processing samples of blood cells and tissues. The laboratory is committed to providing person-centered care whilst ensuring the safety of both patients and healthcare workers. Recently, there have been concerns raised about potential hazards and risks in the laboratory environment. Your team has been tasked with conducting a risk assessment to identify hazards, evaluate risks and propose control measures to make, mitigate these risks effectively. So on the right, we have five questions for you to examine and apply to this scenario. In, by yourself or in groups, please take time to answer these questions and then discuss what you have answered sharing different practices, different ideas, and coming up with a key evaluation and a final answer for each of the questions. To summarise, the Health and Safety Executive's five steps to risk assessment. They identify hazards systematically, determine who might be harmed, evaluate risks and implement proportionate control measures, records findings and implements control measures, and regularly reviews and updates risk assessments. In regards to legislation and risk assessment, we've explored Health and Safety Work Act and COSH regulation, which provides the legal framework for risk assessments in healthcare. It's about a duty to ensure the health, safety and welfare employees and others affected by work activities with COSH regulations mandating the assessments and control of hazardous substances to protect workers and patients. We've explored the integration of risk assessment measures in clinical settings, which applies to both measurement techniques and the workspace to ensure patient and staff safety. We've explored assessing the home environment for patient conducting measurements and undertaking risk assessments based on patient characteristics and needs, recognising diverse patient traits and tailoring care accordingly, and explored specimen collection, risk assessment measures which ensure safety, accuracy and person-centred care through proactive risk identification and adherence to SOPs. We've explored effective communication and person-centred care, prioritising um, throughout the risk assessment and healthcare processes so that we can empower patients to express their needs and concern, fostering a compassionate and respectful approach and tailoring specimen collection procedures to meet individual patients' preferences, ensuring a positive experience and accurate results. And finally, we've explored continuous improvement and compliance, regularly reviewing and updating risk assessments to address changes in the healthcare environment and advances in best practices compliance with registration requirements and S adherence to SOPs to ensure maintaining a safe and health working environment and explored continuous improvement in communication facilities, ongoing compliance and the well-being of patients and healthcare workers. So by incorporating these key takeaways into risk assessment procedures, healthcare professionals can ensure the safety, well-being and quality of care for all stakeholders. Mastering risk assessments, embracing person-centred care are essential skills for healthcare scientists. By understanding the principles and practices outlined today, we can create safer, more compassionate healthcare environments for all. 
Thank you for joining us in this bite-side session.